hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel my name is mariana and in today's video i'm going to be giving you some tips on how to get a first in assignments this video is not gonna be like my old videos where i stand here and talk but it's gonna be a powerpoint presentation because i want to show you a lot of examples and i think the best way to do that is by showing you a powerpoint so let's get straight to it let's stop chatting and let's get straight to it okay so as i said before in this video i am going to be giving you eight tips on how to get a first in your assignment i will be using law related examples but even if you're not a law student there are plenty of things that can be still applicable to you so let's get straight into it so the first and most important tip is to start on time Assignments are usually given two to three weeks before the deadline. That is plenty, plenty of time. And um, you do not, and I repeat, you do not want to only work on one assignment for one single week, especially if it's close to the deadline. That is going to be super stressful and it will immensely reduce your chances to get a first. The more time you have to work on one assignment, the better. So please plan your time effectively and decide when and for how long you want to work on that assignment. You can make a plan, you can write it in your agenda and just have a fixed date and time of how much you want to work on one assignment. Remember that time is precious and you have to waste it wisely. So please do that. Second tip is to read the question properly. The question does not have to be read once not twice not three times and not four times you have to keep reading the question throughout the course of your essay uh, until it's finished the more you read the question the more you will understand it and the more you will understand what the question is really asking and what the lecturer wants to see in that essay and um, sometimes when we read the question once, we may feel like we got it all, we understand what it's asking. But if you keep going back to it, you actually realize, oh, wait, this is not what the question is asking. I think I have to add this, I have to add that. And you will just have a better idea the more you read it. So please, every time you decide to work on that assignment, reread the question first and then keep going. And it will also be useful to write a bullet point of what you think the question is asking or information that you can add as you go along. So let's keep going. Trip number three is to dissect the question. So uh, what I mean by dissect is I'm going to show you an example. So this question is my cyber law essay question of last semester. And it says, allowing broadband carriers to control what people see and do online would fundamentally undermine the principles that have made the internet such a success. This was a quote given by Fint Surf in 2006. And the question also says, discuss this statement with reference to net neutrality regulations in the EU and the US. So what I mean by that sect is read each question carefully one by one. Do not just jump straight to this question down here that says discuss this statement, blah, blah, blah. But the first thing you must do in such instance when you have a quote is to search where the quote comes from. In what context was it given? In what, in what context was it said? Many people don't actually look at the quote in itself. They don't look at where the quote comes from, the foundation behind the quote, and they just jump straight into it and uh, just analyze the question. But you need to have a better idea and a better understanding and a wider understanding of why this was said. So once you read the quote and understood where it comes from, you can then start answering the question. In a question like this, um, what the question is really asking you is, would allowing broadband carriers to control what people see and do online fundamentally undermine the principles that have made the internet such a success. The first thing that should be coming to your mind when you read this quote is, what has made the internet such a success? What are the, st the things that have made the internet a success? Um, and once you research that, you, you would then have to see what it means to allow broadband carriers to control what people see and do online. What do you mean by that? Do you mean they have to control um, how much 
time I spend on the internet, what I see, what I, what I do. So understand what it means by allowing. What do you mean by allowing them? What do you allow them to do? Um, and make sure that everything you discuss has to be referenced to net neutrality in the USA and the EU. So in a question like this, and this is also what I did, answer it with an introduction. I, will, I would say what I will be discussing in the essay. I would then jump to what are the principles that have made the internet such success. In this case, it was the fact that the internet has always been open, has always been free and um, not controlled. And then I would then move to net neutrality in the US. What is the situation there? Um, did they allow broadband carriers to control what people see and do? What was the consequence? And also in the EU and then the conclusion. And by the way, net neutrality is the principle that says that the internet should not be controlled, but it should be free, uh, just in case you don't know what it means. So this is how I would answer a question like this. And this is what I mean by dissect. I'm not going to look at the question as a whole, but I'm going to look at it piece by piece. Piece by piece. So yeah, if you want to ha pause and look, have a look at this, you can see. So let's keep going. Tip number four is research. Research is one of the key points of getting a good grade because research equals to information. The more research you have, the more information you have, the more understanding you have. Research has to be wide. You cannot only look at one resource. You, can only, you cannot only look at one website. You have to look at many websites as possible and read as many books as possible. You will be surprised, but many people think that you can find everything in one single book. That is not true at all. When it comes to assignments, uh, the first time I am given an assignment, um, I will go straight to the library and uh, get any book as possible, read any book as possible. In most of my assignments, I've used five to six books. I'm not saying I'm reading them all, but um, I'm trying to see whether there is information that you cannot find one single information in one book and there is some key information that can only be found in one book so please make sure you use a various variety of resources and not only one i also want to point you out to something sometimes when it comes to research it can be quite tiring especially when you have to read long um long things uh, in, the, in the website um for example there is this page i'm showing you here is a reading of a bill and it was quite, quite long. I'm not going to lie, very long. And one of the quotes that was in my essay was inside this page. Obviously, I could just find, press Control um, S and search the quote and just read that. But by doing that, I will miss a lot of information. And I really wanted to read all of the website. So one thing that I did and I'm going to show you here is, so I went on these three dots which many pages have, and then I pressed read aloud. And Google just read the page for me. And I was just there chilling, eating a snack while Google read the page for me. This is very useful if you're someone who um, gets pretty tired easily. It will save your eyes from straining for long hours. And to be honest, it's quite quicker. The speed, you can adjust the page and you can just there and just use your hearing, pay attention and you don't actually have to stress your eyes or your brain to reading this because after some time, to be honest, you will get tired. And many people, when they see something this long and this was very, very long, I'm not gonna lie, um, they would just skip it or just try to find the key information, which you can do in most cases. But by doing that, you could miss a lot of important information that can be added in your assignment. In this page, there was a lot, a lot of criticism that I was able to add to my assignment. If I just jumped to the quotes, I wouldn't have grasped anything. So let's keep going. Fifth tip is to pay attention to what sources you use. Remember that when it comes to essay, all your sources must be academic and they must be also reliable resources um i'm just going to show you some examples for law students those are one of the sources that i found very very helpful they've got a lot of information uh, lexis i think most people know this west law and hey online is actually full full of information many people don't know this i think but um you can find so many information that is actually crazy 
FT is also useful and here online if you for most universities it's free as well so just to let you know google scholar is very good because it makes sure that it assures you that you have academic and reliable resources but um i found that many things that are on google are not actually on google scholar so um i would use google as well but just make sure that everything that you have there is information that is reliable and also um there is something that i'm not sure whether many people notice but at the end of each page especially i'm talking about law books at the end of each page of a law books you have footnotes footnotes contain a lot of information and a lot of links or books that can be used in your essay so one thing that i would suggest you do if you're law student or if you anyone who has references in books is to go back to each footnote read each footnote and see whether there is information that you could actually use in your essay it is basically an opportunity to see more um resources and see whether there is something that is helpful there so what i do every time i read a book i will go down to the page see whether there is any information footnotes that i could research or um, use or explore and see whether there is something i can use in my essay let's keep going however please make sure that you do not use resources such as wikipedia and law teacher wikipedia um is not I mean, most of the information that is there appears to be true, but it's not reliable. I could literally just uh, go on a Wikipedia page and just write what I want to write, whatever. Even if it's rubbish, I can just write it there. So it's not reliable. It's not really checked. A lot teacher is not reliable either. Please do not use any website that has things such as essay makers, uh, essay this or things that are not reliable or that are written by people who are not actually academics um however even though you cannot reference these books these things these websites on your essay i found that most information that is there can be used to give you a general idea of what the subject matter in question is so sometimes i do look at those pages i'm not gonna say that i'm not i'm not gonna lie and say that i don't look at them i do because if some some things is hard to understand i feel like in these pages they are written quite um on in an understandable way but please make sure that it's things that are actually true and even though you cannot reference these things in your essay i've noticed that most of these pages have footnotes at the end of the page which actually contain information. I mean, most of them contain information that is actually academic and reliable. So even though you cannot reference these pages in itself, you can look at the footnotes at the end of the page and see whether there is something that you can actually reference, websites that you can actually reference. And uh, please make sure that uh, you do write your references as you go along. So each page, each website or each book that you use, make sure that you write it down in a different page or you can reference it straight away. So you don't have to research it at the end of the essay, which can actually take you plenty, plenty of time and it will waste your time. So what I usually do is I will write the link down um, and the books that I use and then at the end of the essay I will write the referencing properly and everything. Tip number six is to use your words efficiently. Make good use of your words. I'm going to show you an example. In the essay I showed you before uh, we were given 2,500 words. Most of my assignments, I mean all of my assignments, have a 10% leeway. They give you 10% leeway which in this case would equal to 250 words. In the assignment I showed you before, I used 2,750 words, which is actually the maximum. Um, the more words you have, to be honest, the better. In the assignment I showed you before, one of the feedback was um, your essay was really good, blah, blah, blah. However, I would have also added this. He told me that in, in order to have more marks, I should have added something extra. So this is what I mean. If you do stop at 205,000 words, there's much more information that you could actually find that could give you more marks. But many people stop at this and uh, you're just limiting your opportunity and your chances to get a higher grade. However, this does not mean <laughs> that you have to throw mud at the wall, hoping that some of it will stick. If you do have... To add more information and make please make sure that it's information that will actually give you more marks don't just 
copy and paste everything that you see on the internet uh, but make sure that it's something that oh actually this is relevant it could give me more marks let's add it but do not add everything um that is not going to give you marks <laughs> tip number seven is to make sure that your work is critically analyzed you do not and i repeat you do not want a descriptive essay so what i usually do once i have my draft the draft of my essay and i've got all my information there i will analyze each paragraph and ask my question ask myself is this paragraph well criticized did they actually criticize this paragraph is there enough criticism or does it look like i'm just telling a story does it look like i'm telling a fairy tale if your answer is yes then please make sure that you rewrite the paragraph and make sure that you add the criticism i always make sure that there is some criticism in each paragraph you do not want a single descriptive paragraph so even if you feel like you're, you haven't criticized much do more research and see whether you can find criticism of what you've written down um please you do not want and i repeat again you do not want a descriptive essay it's not going to give you any marks whatsoever it will give you some marks but not enough to get a 17 um because at the end of the day each of us has an opinion so ask yourself what is my opinion on this matter do i agree with this do i not yes no um but however make sure that any opinion that you put has to be backed up by resources don't just write your opinion like that. Make sure that it's backed up. So last and final tip is proofreading. Proofread and format. Once you have your essay, well written and everything, you have to check whether you've got any grammatical errors, punctuation and things like that. Because that can give you less marks. <laughs> um, there is something that I'm not sure whether many people know. Many people maybe do know about this, but they're not actually using it, which is Grammarly. Grammarly is amazing. Um, I'm talking about the non, not the premium version, but the normal free version. Every time that I finish an assignment, I will put it on Grammarly and see whether there are things that I've missed. Maybe a comma, punctuation, capital letter, a double letter. Um, so please make sure that you use Grammarly at the end, but also be careful because not everything that Grammarly will tell you is um, has to be changed. Uh, so use your own common sense and see whether this is something that has to be changed in your opinion or whether it can be left like that. Grammarly will tell you whether your paragraph is too wordy, whether you could word it some in another way. And it's very helpful because you could miss a comma, um, word could miss a comma or a punctuation that could cost you marks. So in order to make sure that everything is perfect, use Grammarly in my opinion. And there's also a phrase bank. Academic Phrase Bank is a website that will basically show you how you can write your introduction or your conclusion. It could show you what phrase you could use to make your work more professional. Um, so please check that out too. So I always look at this um, once I'm done with the assignment or during the assignment. It's really helpful to see how you can write something to make you look professional. And then once you have all the punctuation and everything is done make sure that your format is actually correct check whether you're within the word count check whether you've numbered each page have you used have you used the right fonts and paragraph and all of these things and uh, if you have a draft submission um option with your essay make sure that you post it on the draft submission first before submitting it on your final because it will show you how much plagiarism you have and if your plagiarism is too high it's an opportunity to change the way you've worded something so check that out too and uh, don't submit your assignment too late because in my university the later you submit your assignment the more plagiarism you will have because more people would have submitted it before you and if they use things similar as yours your plagiarism plagiarism percentage will be high so don't leave it to the last minute don't submit it on the day of the deadline but at least one or two days before and yeah, once you've checked everything, then that is the end. And well done, you should clap to yourself and you've done it. Once you've submitted the assignment, don't look back, that is gone. You've done it, be positive and be motivated that it will go well. And uh, if you have more assignments, work on them. If not, then that will be it. But I hope this video was helpful. Um, 
I hope that most of the tips I've given you can be applicable to you. If not, then it's fine. If you have any questions or there's something you didn't understand from this um, presentation, then feel free to comment on the or down below or message me privately and I can give you more tips or anything that you need. And yeah, I guess that's all. And uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.